Welcome. That's great. You guys really quieted it, quieted down without uh, me even having to get started. You guys must be anxious and ready to worship. Um, I'm just going to start off uh, with uh, announcements. Uh, we're glad to see everyone here. Uh, snow is supposed to be coming, so everyone be careful on the way home. But my understanding is it's going to not be near as much as what they thought once again. So uh, Daryl is in the aisle if anyone has any announcements. I was here early as an usher, if you want to call it that. I just stand back and watch Daryl do his thing. And um, But uh, uh, I... Uh, I was busy just kind of scribbling my notes, and and I and I missed I missed the meeting this morning, so I don't know if with the ushers, so we're good. Is there no announcements from from you? Okay. Let's see. Um, just a reminder that the intergenerational Sunday school class on the final days of Jesus starts next Sunday in the mezzanine. And there are still, I think, four or so books out there if anybody else is still interested in joining in. Very good. Thank you, Marilyn. Any, anyone else? All right. No others? Uh, so we don't have a lot of activities today, so uh, we're all to go enjoy our Sunday. Um, I uh, as as I turn the page here, I've got my. I don't know if uh, my guess is Jerry and Beth do not recognize this. I would be my guess, but this was a graduation gift from them. Uh, so that's either 19 years ago or 26 years ago. It used to have my initials on it, but uh, they're gone. So, <laughs> but. Um, all right, well, if there's nothing else, I appreciate the extra time you're giving me for the call to worship. Um, <laughs> um, for real. <laughs> uh, so, you know, for me, it's always a struggle to narrow down what I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm going to be all over the place. I, I'm, I am an ADHD type of kid. My dad's pincher grip is the thing that cured me. I didn't have any uh, Ritalin or anything to take. It was dad sitting there like this if I stepped out of line. So, uh, but I am ADHD. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll start off with a little story. There's a, a couple stops at a gas station. It's a CEO and his wife. They're getting ready to go on a vacation. Uh, it's going to be a lengthy drive. The man goes in to pay for gas after filling up. He comes out and he sees his, his wife's talking to the uh, man, uh, gas station attendant that works there. And uh, so he gets in the car and they kind of talk and he finds out she used to date the man. And uh, so they start driving. And again, this is a CEO and his wife and they're driving along. And uh, it's pretty silent for quite a few miles and the man is kind of smugly, you know, kind of proud of who he's become. Pretty soon, he finally looks over at his wife and he says, uh, "I bet I know what you're thinking." And she, and she goes, "Well, what do you think I'm thinking?" And he said, well, "I bet I bet you're glad that you married me. You know, you're the wife of a CEO." And and she kind of laughs and said, "Not not really what I was thinking." And he said, "Well, what were you thinking?" And she said, "Well." I was thinking if I'd married that man, he'd be a CEO and you'd be working at a gas station. So, <laughs> so uh, I thought that was a great story. <laughs> Not true, I don't believe, although it's probably happened somewhere. Uh, but certainly uh, we are often who, uh, who our spouse has shaped us into. Um, but no, I, I do enjoy laughing, I do enjoy joking, but I, I do feel like I have a serious role here today, and that is to lead us in worship. We are, I call us to worship. Um, as part of that, can we go ahead and put our Bible memory verse up, Phil? Um, all right, let's go ahead. This is, uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. So that's just to bring us back to the scripture. Um, I often, when I, 
there's, there's many times I've used the analogy of trying to figure out a way in talking with my children and talking with others. You know, this, this world, will, you will drift away uh, from God if you're not pursuing him. I said it the other day at the lock-in. It was, uh, I chimed in and, and uh, shouted from the back of those words. Uh, the analogy that I've come up with is, is kind of either that like God is up at the top of an escalator up in heaven and, and we're in the middle of it. And even if you're, even if, even if you're, you know, maybe coming to church or, and, and just kind of going through life, and if you're not pursuing that escalator, it's moving down. It's not moving. I'm not talking an escalator that's moving up. We're on an escalator that's moving away. Or another way to think of it is that there's a shore and you're out in the, in, that you want to get to and you're standing out in the, in the waves and there's a riptide that's just pulling you away. And if you're not actively pursuing, you're going to drift out to sea. We're going to drift out. This world uh, will allow us to drift out. Um, so it's our job to pursue. It's our job. We have to, we have to seek God. And um, the um, one, part of my way in, in helping me pursue is I listen to lots of Christian radio. I have lots of time in the car. And uh, oftentimes I hear things and I think everybody needs to know that. Christians need to hear that. And a lot of times I'll make a little note on my phone. I'll, I'll pull up on my notes app and I'll, I'll, I'll speak it into it. And sometimes later I have to go back and revise it because it'll be gibberish. It doesn't understand hillbilly lingo always. But um, the... Uh, some of the things that I've, I've, and, and that's what I normally go to when I get asked to do this. And then I normally have this list of 30 things that I've documented at different times that I'm trying to pull. Which is the most important? Which are some of the things to bring to you? And, and by no means are these some important, uh, of the, the most important necessarily, but the ones that I pulled out this time. Uh, in this world, this is the most heaven that a lost person will ever know. So in this world, this is the most heaven a lost person will ever know is what they're experiencing now. But it's also, for a saved person, it's the most, it's the most hell a saved person will ever know. And that's pretty, it's a pretty profound thought, really. I mean, this is the closest thing to heaven that somebody that's lost is going to experience. This is the closest thing to hell that somebody that's saved is going to experience in eternity. Uh, a recent one was, children do not make a rich man poor. They make a poor man rich. Uh, absolutely true. Uh, and uh, But those two themselves don't have, have scripture in them. Many of mine do, but I would have to expound greatly on these. But as I tried, so here's the ADHD, scattering around, squirrel running, I'm chasing. Uh, as I, I, I listened to the entire book of Hebrews, uh, it doesn't take very long, it's probably an hour, you know. Um, I listened to that in preparation. Um, I had a conversation with a man at Lucasville the other day, and um, it, it, was, it was a good conversation. He actually said he used to be a pastor. But um, Hebrews 13, 8 is, is, was our Bible memory verse. It's also what we're going to be preaching from that Pastor Jared will be preaching from. But in Hebrews 13, here I'm listening, I'm listening. I just had this conversation with this man on Friday. I'm getting through, there's, there's, Hebrews is rich. There's lots of stuff in there. But it gets to Hebrews 13, and I really perk up the ears and really try to pay attention. So let me just read Hebrews 13. Um, Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them. Uh, I, this week, like in this conversation with him, the last thing he said as he walked out is, remember to pray for us. And then here it is, a day later, two days later, I, like, the very part of scripture that says remember to pray for the prisoners now you know obviously Paul's talking as a, as a, uh, a man in prison uh, for for the gospel 
uh, this man, I looked up his crime and, and uh, you know, he, he stole an MP3 player and then tried to slice it a couple people with a box cutter. Um, so it's a little different scenario, but I don't know where, I don't know what led up to that. I don't know if he was on drugs, uh, but he's in a bad situation. He's, he's, he's served eight years for, for stealing an MP3 player and then trying to slice it some people with a box cutter. Had he not done that, I mean, he wouldn't have gotten any time. But it was the fact that he was in a mall and he slashed at some people and he could have, you know, potentially killed them. So, uh, but, uh, so, you know, I do, his name is Michael D. Freeman, uh, which every time I see the name Freeman, I, it's special to me. <laughs> and um, so his last name is Freeman, but uh, I, I I would, uh, I have prayed for him. I would encourage you to pray for him. So, uh, and to pray for, for all inmates. Uh, there's a lot of light in there. There's a lot of darkness. So we have the word of God. Uh, sometimes it's just a verse. Sometimes it's a single verse. Today's message is going to be on a single verse. Uh, and, you know, we have, it, it is the power of God. It's the word of God. We are here to bring glory to God. We're here to get charged for the week. So uh, let's, uh, let's enter this time with hearts ready to praise him, ready to worship, ready to be charged, and then let's go forth this week and, and serve him. This morning, we will stand on the uh, second song that we sing, um, There is a Redeemer, and then we'll also stand at the end of the sermon for our hymn of response, God Will Make a Way. Our first song is Surely Goodness and Mercy, and it starts off a pilgrim, and our songs this morning do talk about the way and do talk about the uh, journey. Surely goodness and mercy 
mercies shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I shall feast at the table spread for me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life, all the days, all the days of my life. Let's all stand. There certainly is a redeemer.
and it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. All right, let's go ahead and call the ushers forward. The offering. Uh, the offering today is for the general fund, and uh, thank you guys. That's uh, that's one of my favorites to hear saying it's right in my range. Uh, thank you, Marjorie and Mom, for for playing this morning. It was good to have that duo back after a little bit of time off with Mom's hip. So it's uh, definitely the sounds of my childhood. So um, all right, let's go ahead and bow her heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, again thank you for this day. We thank you for how blessed we are, uh, both uh, spiritually and financially, and uh, you meet our needs, Lord. Uh, we thank you uh, for, for jobs to, to go to. We thank you for warm houses, and Lord, help us with happy, open hearts to willingly give back to you, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power in love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see next song, a okay, hallelujah, you'll recognize the first verse. You may not recognize the next three. I can guarantee you didn't listen, haven't heard the last one. Um, we'll, uh, we'll be singing this in honor of our Savior. And again, it goes on a journey uh, from the birth of Jesus all the way to the cross and talks to us about our relationship with I've heard about this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy and I just want to sing this song to you. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift. With every breath I'm singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ, He is the Son, the Holy and Anointed One. He is my Savior and He is my Lord. Upon the cross He died for me. He gave His life to set me free. Eternal life with Him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He 
touched my soul, he lives in me, I love him so, I trust in him with all of my heart. The power of his blood to heal, there's victory, oh yes, it's real, the savior of the world, oh hallelujah. Jesus is the only way, ask him in your heart today, he's always here for you and for me. It's peace and joy he always brings, thank you Lord you rose again, Jesus Christ our Lord he is alive. Heaven's gates, you came to earth, a baby boy, you brought new birth. Now as your child, I'll live for you always. In heaven now, you pray for me, bring love and mercy, grace that's free. For you are the gift of God for all the world. need a moment. I remember as a kid, we would, uh, we would stand for the hallelujah chorus and to hear that word sung so many times and that was well done and then to hear uh, near angelic voices behind me harmonizing. They're sitting in the front row. Um, for scripture today, it's it's brief, so I was, I'm going to do something different uh, a little bit. Uh, we've already said it once, but uh, it's from Hebrews 13:8, and I'm just going to say, you tell me. I've got I've got the power of a smart device here in front of me. You name the translation you want. I'll look it up. Hebrews 13:8. Anybody? Message. The message here. Got it. I've got a four version Bible in front of me. Um, for Jesus doesn't change. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, he's always totally himself. Anyone else? Another version? King James. New, New King James in front of me here. Um, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Another? ESV. I know. I knew. I, I should have known Cliff was going to go there. I know that's one that that's one that him and I both both enjoy. I like Holman Christian and ESV. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. I'll give you an NIV. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. 
NLT. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I haven't even had to go to the smartphone but once. Anybody want another? You get the point. NRSV. We'll go there. This one may download. May have to take five seconds to download. We'll see how good boost service is here. Uh, NRSV. Oh, no, good. Don't have to. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Feel free to ask me another if you want after church, I'll tell you. Tempted following the hallelujah chorus and Jared's rendition of different translations of scripture of just saying, have a great week. But I won't. <clears throat> Stop and think about it. We've come a long way. Haven't we? Think about all the inventions new technology we've seen in our lifetimes. And inevitably, the older that you are, the more that you've seen. For example, some of you have seen a computer that big. Some of you have seen a man walk on the moon for the first time. Some of you know what that is. I rest my case. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hank, you know what that is? What? What kind of phone? An old phone. <laughs> Joanne's phone. How do you use it? Do you know how you dial it? Okay, good. Rotary dial phone. Maybe a little bit more contemporary. How many, by a show of hands, how many actually had one of those? One per, oh, okay. Five people, six people. Things evolve. We go from box TVs to flat screens. We go from rotary phones to, in some cases, no phones, cell phones. We have digital cable, satellite networks. We have DVDs and Blu-rays. DVRs, although Blu-rays and DVDs are even becoming a thing of the past. Rotary phones, cordless phones, pagers, home phones, and of course cell phones. We can communicate anywhere at any time. Skype, texting, Facebook, FaceTime. What about some of the advances in medical technology? Some of you may be saying, you think change. Let me, let me tell you the things that I've experienced. Let me, sh let me share a few things with you. As I think about the generation that has seen the most change, I think about my grandparents' generation. Unfortunately, all of my grandparents have since passed, but to think about some of the dramatic changes that age group has experienced, it kind of blows my mind. They've seen cars, they've seen planes, rockets, space shuttles, electricity, plumbing, computers, televisions, telephones, central air, freezers, and more. It's hard to believe that there was actually at one time an ice delivery service. Anybody ever have ice delivered to their home? If there is a constant in this world to change. Nothing we do today resembles what we did 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Some would argue that change isn't good. We all have a desire for our lives to be consistent, to have a rhythm. Amen? Nobody else? Okay, I'm the only one. All right. How about physical changes? 
right? Flexibility, energy. How about appearance? Go ahead, turn the light. Yeah, let that, let that sit with you for a minute. Right? Wow. I got to stand back a little bit for this one. That was uh, 20 years ago, 19 years ago, about 45 pounds ago, a lot of bleach ago, like the frosted tips. Anybody have frosted tips when they were a kid? Casey, I knew you'd be one. Jared, no? No? Did you consider it? No. (laughs) That might be just the same. It's true in all aspects of life. It's true at home. Let's just leave that up there for the rest of the day, shall we? It's true at home, at work, at school, at the grocery store where they often change where your favorite foods are. Man, that hacks me off. I want to get in and get out. And yes, it even happens in our faith communities. Still, sometimes we fight and stomp our feet at the prospect of change. Change takes time and intentionality. And in the midst of all of this change, we have the words from Hebrews that Jared read repeatedly. And I'm going to bring verse 5 for you this morning as well. Starting in verse 5, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Here's where I'd like for you to focus and and listen. Because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And going on to verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Yet change and Christ really do go together. Change is inevitable Christ is absolute never changing we're always faced with making adjustments in our lives because of change sometimes change sometimes our changes are for the worse sometimes for the better but our lives are always changing I imagined a bit this week what some of our founders from some of Sharon Mennonite Church's founders might think if they were to walk through those doors this morning. Would there, be rea- would there be reactions to our building, to our worship style? Would they think that we still hold close to those foundational things that formed us for the reasons in which this building, these people started gathering together? I think it's fair to say that some would not like what they see. But many of those, many would know these changes have helped equip us to carry on the gospel message. The love of Christ. In all the changes they see, one thing would remain constant. Jesus. The gospel grace and love what they would find is a changeless Christ and a forever changing church Jesus the same yesterday today and forever we are, we are asked to believe this powerful statement no matter where we come from no matter our job no matter our upbringing or any other difference we can come up with Jesus is the beginning and the end. Jesus is the beginning and the end. He is God. He is the one who spoke to Moses in the burning bush. He is the one that revealed himself to John. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And he is the one that revealed himself to you and I. And if by some chance don't know Jesus this morning 
He desires to reveal himself to you. In changing times, we can count on a changeless Christ. His power has not and will not change. His sovereignty has not and will not change. His goodness, his love, his compassion, his grace, put any word in there, has not and will not change. Interesting, yesterday our leadership team gathered to talk talk about where we've been and where we want to go. It's amazing how many times I physically heard the word change in that short amount of time. One theme that came out of those conversations and one that I thought was very helpful. I think the others could have seen my mind blowing up as it was shared. Think about this idea of change in the context of a speedboat or a barge. Fairly simple and quick to change direction in a speedboat, no? But how many people can a speedboat hold? Changing a barge's direction takes time, energy. But it can seat us all. There's room for everyone to be aboard, be on board with the change that's taking place. I started this morning talking about many different forms of change, change that has impacted us over the years and in a lot of ways will continue to impact us in the years to come. A lot of those fall into different categories. We are all experiencing life change, church change. Talk about life change, it's simply that. Life changes, we get older. Sometimes that's great, sometimes not so great. As a child, you can't wait to get older. You're on the speedboat. You want to grow up so you can do more things. You can get your own phone. You can stay up later. You can drive a car, go to college. Those are fun changes, right? Those are the things that we look forward to. Other changes come too as we get older. New responsibilities, things like college, working, paying bills, family matters, maybe marriage and children to that the joys of caring for children challenges of caring for children aging retirement grandchildren older children sickness mortality ultimately our death life changes some changes are great some changes are not so great yet through all of our changes the writer of Hebrews reminds us of this and I'll say it again I don't know if we said it enough already Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Christ is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Amen. These are great words of comfort as we think about the change that we've seen, the change that we will continue to see. We don't fully know what lies ahead. We don't know what we will resemble in five or even ten years. Will we be better? Will we be closer? Will we be stronger? The question that I'm sure you're all asking is, will we be bigger? Will we be bigger? Will we be bigger? Smaller? Will we have more struggles? no matter what happens, good or bad, whether we have committees or teams or one pastor or three, the same old responsibilities or some new ones, we have been assured that God will never, never, ever forsake us. He will never leave us. As the world changes around us, the church must change along with it. Every church must consistently be willing to change in order to reach people with the greatest story ever told. The greatest story ever told. 
must be able to, willing to be able to tell it in contemporary, relatable languages with styles of music that all of God's children can understand. Doesn't mean we water down the gospel. In fact, what is mostly vital is that we preach the word of God with even more conviction. Big question that I have wrestled with in classes and peer groups. Can a church be contemporary and biblical? Can a church be attractional and missional? Can it? Do we have to choose one way to make the message of Jesus Christ come alive? I believe it's critical to be both. I don't believe it's an either or. I believe it's a both and. But how do we remain contemporary? How do we move towards contemporary without losing biblical integrity? For me, two things hold true. Recognition that some things never, ever change. Scripture, Jesus, God, His love. Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. We have it right in our scripture this morning. Our God is a faithful God who never, ever changes. In a world that is constantly changing, that world needs Jesus' good news. That world needs us to be missional. Second is that there are things in this world that are always changing. I've shared example after example. Things are always changing. As Jesus was concluding the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7, 24, he said, Therefore, everyone who hears the, these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. What is that rock? What's our rock? Is it this book? I certainly hope so. Is it Jesus? Is it God? We are told to build our house, our lives upon that rock. We know what that rock is. He is immovable, unshakable, a sure foundation. Luke 21, 33, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Some things never, ever change, and that is great comforting news. Fact is, the, the gospel message, the, the message of the love and compassion of Jesus Christ is and always will be the same. Different culture, different times, different methods. Take this for example. Some of you grew up with an outhouse, yes? We don't want to go back there, do we? Some of you didn't grow up with central air, or televisions, or phones. I think everyone here has those things. We might say, some of us, myself included at times, would be better off without technology. But I'm not sure I'd want to go back. So how do we go about, go about this in this changing world? I bring to you this morning that the church, we as a body of believers, must be a step ahead of change. When far too often we lag behind. If we don't show Christ's love, then what type of Christ follower are we? How can we preach a changes, changeless and loving God when we're angry, frustrated, and unforgiving? How can we go into the world and seek to trample others to hurt in the name of business, sports, or politics 
only to attend church on Sunday mornings with smiles on our faces if we have it all together. The doors of Sharon Mennonite Church must be open. Our arms must be open to welcome all of God's people. We must be proactive, not reactive. There are opportunities to reach out to people who are in need, not only outside of these walls, but internally as well. I think we do a phenomenal job of that. How do we build upon the foundation that we've already set? Last week, Cohen challenged us to be the lifeguards and standing next to the lazy next to the lazy river of life. Do you remember that? I hope so. He did a phenomenal job. My question to you this morning, are, you, are we going to be the lifeguards with our arms outstretched with the, same, the saving arms of this unchanging Jesus? Or are we going to watch as lives flow by? We need to be out there sharing our stories listening to stories of others we all have stories to share whether it's stories of change stories of consistency we all have the story of Jesus to share with one another regardless of the change that may or may not take place the important thing to remember that Jesus is always in the midst of that change I pray that you will be a part of that change by being on the barge with me with us It'll take time. It'll take discernment. But change is possible and necessary. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. that there are things that will not change but that there are things that also will whether we like it or not And uh, but you know Isaiah says uh, you will hear a voice behind you saying this is the way the song that we're singing now is God will make a way and uh, it's important for us together to grow uh, closer to Christ and, uh, and also in our individual lives God will make a way for us as a group and for us individually.
you to rise for the benediction. Let us pray. God, may we go from these doors, go from these walls, knowing, assured, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. together with